Welcome to the Weber Cup at the Barnsley Metrodome and the USA have established a slender lead on the final day. They lead by 11 points to 9. Yes, we've had history making, perfect games and real drama here at the Barnsley Metrodome. The USA were ahead by 4. Europe keep though cutting that gap. At the moment it's 2 points which isn't much on this final day. Team Europe had a disappointing start to the event, but they fought back from 5-1 down. Spurred on by their local support, they leveled the score, but just can't seem to get ahead of the Americans, who are defending their title in style. Last time, Team Europe kept their 100% winning record in the Baker matches. They had nine strikes and looked a much stronger team, taking a confident win. Then it was the doubles match and the European duo Martin Larson and Don Barrett suffered from a couple of open frames allowing Chris Barnes and Tommy Jones to take back their two-point advantage. So far it's one point apiece in this penultimate session here at Weber Cup 14. Coming up, it's the next instalment between two rivals. They're meeting for the fourth time in the singles format at this Weber Cup. It's Barrett versus Barnes. And then it's a doubles game as Europe's captain Mika Koivinyemi and Martin Larsson face Mike Fagan and Bill O'Neill. Can Europe ever get ahead of Team USA? There's only one way to find out. Let's get the action back underway. Time to introduce Team Europe's Dom Barrett. And now, Team USA's captain, it's Chris Barnes. Right, let's have a quick chat with them both. Come on over. You guys have played each other a few times in this Weber Cup. It's turning into a real rivalry, isn't it? Yeah, it turns out as, as the random draws and without knowing what the other one picked, uh, we bowled each other. This will be our fourth time in the, in the Weber Cup this year. So unusual to bowl each other that much. And there's still a chance for, for another one later. Absolutely. You guys know each other so well, don't you? And it's just one of the quirks of the team sheets that when you hand it in, you don't actually know who you're going to be playing when the team sheets are handed in. Yeah, that's right. As we uh, you know, think about lane play and things like that, I guess uh, the teams are thinking very, very uh, similarly. So we go down and we go down the list and think about who's going to play in what order as the lane condition goes on. And I'm sure they do the same. So it just keeps getting picked out that Chris and I are playing each other. OK, fourth time we've seen you guys play together. We'll look forward to it, Chris and Dom. Will the USA be three points ahead or can Europe narrow the gap? Let's find out with your commentators, Cass Edwards and Andy Boldfish. Well, thanks very much indeed, Tony. Well, no prizes for guessing where Europe need to up their average. This is the 13th singles matchup in this year's Weber Cup. The United States have won nine so far. So, can Dom start to buck the trend? Dom Barrett lives these days in Essex. Best finish. In the 2012-13 season, was in Vienna in the tournament prior to the Weber Cup. Good start. Strike for Don Barrett. Well, yeah, as he leads off and gets the strike, pressure immediately straight back on the American captain, Chris Barnes. If this man suffers from any pressure, if Barrett can keep things going and uh, keep that one shot ahead, it will be very interesting as we get to the closing stages of this game. But interestingly, Chris Barnes has played against Dom three times so far in this event. And believe it or not, Andy's averaging 257 against Dom Barrett. And there's another strike just to keep it equal. A pretty high average, of course, helped by the 300 game holding the first singles match of the whole tournament. 
And if this match has been played, it's the third game that's been bowled on this lane since it's been uh, redressed. So, Messenger! Yes! Strike! Don second. Two from two for Europe. Yes, and fiancé Cassie liked that one. Great looking shot for Don Brown. Headfield comes flying back across the pin deck and it looks so spectacular. Just watch this one. Well, that's when you get a break and you wonder just if the luck is turning in your favour. <laughs> Another half a second or so and that machine would have come down for the reset. Dom's number one fan. And Chris has got a few fans as well as he strings strike number two to keep it all level. Just going back to the lane condition. Yeah, it's, uh, it's had two games on this lane already which means that uh, it's what they call bowling on the burn. The, uh, some of the lines that the players have been using have been dried, dried out by other bowling balls. And so you're, they're looking for a, a lot more back end, a lot more hook down the end of the lane. And they're going to have to adjust their speed and their angles to take advantage of that uh, f extra friction in the back end of the lane. I needed a bit of help last time. I needed it again there. Doesn't get it though. And that is the first spare from Team Europe's Don Barrett. Both players standing way left on the approach. Ball not quite in the pocket. And that six, as you can see, jumps around, even touches the 10 pin. But won't knock it over. Second ball does though, so the spare is made. First blemish for Dom after those two strikes. Oh, well, leaves that seven pin hanging and it's catching. A spare left for Team USA. Yeah, just leave the seven pin standing in the corner after two strikes in a row. Hard and straight. Gutted it. Oh, that's a shocker from Chris Barnes, the American skipper there, leaving an open frame in frame four here. And all of a sudden, the ascendancy back with Don Barrett. You've got to get your angles right. It's all very well going hard and straight, but if it's, uh, it's not hard and straight at the target, it's going to drop in the channel and score zero. Big open frame. Very unusual from Chris Barnes, who, well, he doesn't even want to think about it. He realises that that may be the chance or the opportunity that Barron needs. I've only seen one gutted so far, and it was Martin Larson at the end of that opening session. Here's Dom. Striking! Just, but they'll take it, will Europe? Certainly a late 10 pin to say the least. <laughs> this is not a bad looking shot. Barnes has had the open frame. Light in the pocket, the 10 pin stands, and well, it's just a little nudge, isn't it, from that six pin and get over. Fantastic strike for Don Barrett. That on the back of Barnes's open frame. The American skipper. Digging deep here. Oh, that's the way to do it. Strikes straight back. And that is the mark of a captain when things all of a sudden don't seem to be going your way necessarily. Just to reset, just to refocus and pull off a strike like that. Yes, I can't... I find it almost hard to believe that Chris Barnes uh, channeled that shot at the seven pin and had the open frame. I guess he may, may miss pin, single pins maybe twice a year <laughs> in the season. Just crazy. And on television as well. Will it hurt his team here? Only time will tell. Well, look at the maximum scores. Barnes is down to 267 if he can strike off. Don Pacing at uh, 279. And still is if he can strike off the shoot here. Four from five for Don. 
Yeah, he's uh, throwing some pressure back at Chris Barnes and wants revenge for those couple of defeats that he had earlier on. He's really getting himself lined up. The ball is really in the zone. There's a lot of back end there, as I mentioned. The dry part of the lane, the ball snaps up, and, well, that's good enough for me. Dom takes the applause of the crowd. Friends and family here as well to support Dom, as usual. Pressure time on Chris Barnes because he's following. So as long as Dom keeps striking, Barnes has got to do the same thing, and it's still that might not be good enough. Four strikes from five frames for Dom Barrett. Four strikes from five frames for Chris Barnes. But, of course, it is that open that is really hurting he and his team at present. And that's how we are at the halfway stage.